Hey team, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be taking a look at a post from r slash engineering students titled, I got a 28% on my differential equations midterm. Oh, also make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. It doesn't really do anything for you, but it helps me out a lot. So thanks if you do that. I got a 28% on my differential equations midterm. That's it. That's the post. Just needed to let somebody know. I studied for hours, went to tutoring, and put in the work since the beginning of class only to end up failing, and now I have to withdraw. Professor is an asshole and extremely harsh grader. I've never done this bad in a class before and had to withdraw. I don't know how to feel. Yeah, I don't even know if there's a right feeling that you're supposed to be feeling after something like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, after you fail a test this bad, and it sounds like for the first time, I don't know if there's like a standard protocol you should go through. I think the experience is different with everyone. You know, some people handle failure. Okay, well, it, <laughs> that sounds harsh. That's not what I meant to say. Yeah, you know, some people just handle being a complete failure better than others. Sounds like you're having a tough time. <laughs> no, that's not what I mean. I don't mean to sound that way. But objectively, like at 28%, that's a fail on a test. So you're not a failure. You just did a failing thing. You know that old thing? It's like, no, you're not a bad person. You just did a bad thing. That's all this is. This one test doesn't define you. Just right off the bat, start there. But in terms of how to feel, uh, you probably feel a lot of emotions. Feel them all. Give yourself permission to feel them all. <laughs> Me at a petting zoo. <laughs> the word feel is kind of weird to talk about with animals, isn't it? You pet animals at a petting zoo. You don't feel them. They'll get you kicked out. But whatever flurry of emotions you're feeling, you know that emotion cocktail that's brewing inside of you? Just accept it. Just give yourself permission to feel those feelings. It's gonna hurt. It should hurt. Yeah. Unfortunately, it will hurt. And that's actually what it's supposed to feel like. I know, that kind of sucks. But the quicker you confront those emotions, the quicker you can move on and become the success that you know you are. But this has got to be tough, I know. And I'm guessing, you know, it sounds like this is probably the first time this happened. Like I said, you probably have gotten like low scores on tests, but never a 28. And when you're in college, you know, going to college and paying that much to attend this place, you probably feel really bad because you're like, oh my God, I screwed it up the worst you could. But sometimes that happens. And just know that college is actually a really good opportunity to fail in because the stakes aren't too, too high. Like failing one midterm, you can kind of come back, I think. I don't know if I've ever talked about this, but when I was a freshman, I did fail my second math class I took. And then the next quarter that I retook the class, it was with a different professor and I actually got an A in the class. I bring that up to make the point that you failing this test might not be because you suck at this subject, if that's what you're thinking. It could be because of your circumstances. Like after I took that math class and I failed it, it was natural for me and I did think this, that, oh my God, maybe I just don't know this subject. But like you say, you don't really vibe with the professor and also maybe the grading you know, isn't really forgiving. So maybe it's not that you're not quite getting it, it's just you're being graded in a way that makes it look like you're dumb. That's all this class is doing. You know you're not stupid. Isn't that crazy, getting gaslit by a college course? That's a wild concept. Now you say you have to withdraw. Does that mean you have to withdraw from the class or the university? I would think it's just the class, right? I'm just gonna go forward with the idea that it's the class and I just wanna say this is recoverable. This is a situation you can come back from. Is it gonna suck? Yes. Oh my God, you're gonna think, <laughs> this is the end, this is the end. This, I'm never gonna have success in the rest of my life, but that's not true. Unless you like give into that idea and you kind of manifest that, I suppose. Uh, no, you can come back from this. But like I said, it's gonna be difficult. It's gonna be like mentally difficult to get over this hurdle of accepting, you know, that it's not you, <laughs> it's her. Please come back. But no, it, it, it's gonna be hard to accept that, oh, maybe, you know, you might think you're the problem right now, but it could just be the class. All I wanna say is remain optimistic. That is imperative, as they say. That's imperative to remission. And don't try to think about this too much in the long term. This is actually something I'm telling myself to do now with work. Like, don't look at the problems you're having today, you know, two months out. Take everything week by week. Don't think about what withdrawing from the class is gonna do to your schedule, you know, in your academic career, pushing it out by a few months. Just focus on the fact that this has happened and now there is something you need to accomplish in the next week. Just focus on that. Break your life up into weeks and even days if you wanna get really granular with it. Because if you keep looking at like, oh my God, in like, you know, however many months I have to do this whole class, that's just gonna be demotivating, demoralizing. So feel all the emotions you're feeling. And after that, start to take things day by day, week by week. Just focus on the next seven days. And when you're done with one day, 
focus on the next day. Also, you might look at the number 28 and be like, oh my god, that was low. But no, if you're an engineer, because, you know, this is the engineering students subreddit, uh, that's actually not that bad of a grade. With a curve? Hey, you're right there with the best of them, man. I remember I felt like such an asshole. One of my friends was telling me, they're like, oh my god, I got a 50 on a test. I was like, oh my god. That's good. <laughs> because I thought of everything through the engineering lens. Like 50, I'm like, oh, that's enough to kind of like squeeze in. You know, you curve a 50 and now you basically have a B in the class. So like a 28, sure, with a curve, maybe that's a D and that's still not passing, but it's probably not as bad as you think it is. It's still not passing, but <laughs> you can at least, I'm just saying this so you can apply this logic to think of yourself as not a total failure. I'm not helping. <laughs> I'm that one friend you come to, and then I just don't make the situation any better for you. You actually leave me feeling worse than you came to me. <laughs> I remember one of my friends was having some issues like four years ago, and then they were telling me all this stuff. And then I started spiraling, and then that made them feel worse. I was like, ah, oh, that sucked. I shouldn't, have <laughs> I shouldn't have been the person they came to. Also, I do want to acknowledge this point. You know, you say you studied for hours, you went to tutoring, and you put the work in since the beginning of the class. Someone could, you know, hearing this story be like, oh, you didn't put the work in, like, that's why you failed. But you explicitly call out that, no, I put the work in. I put the man hours in, and I still failed. And I know that's going to make it hurt worse. But that shouldn't discourage you from doing the work in the future. You shouldn't use this as an example of why, oh, look, hard work doesn't pay off. You should just look at this as an example that hard work doesn't always pay off. I think sometimes people fall into the idea that, oh, if I put in X amount of work, I deserve these results. But this is a perfect example that you did all the right and necessary steps. You put in the work and you still fell short. And sometimes that just happens. That is, unfortunately, just life sometimes. I think, uh... A great philosopher once said, that's life. Was Frank Sinatra a philosopher? I don't know, I think my wires got crossed. Anyways, let's read the comments. Take it again with a different professor, if possible. I once had a differential equations with a guy who said he went to MIT. He was a terrible teacher. Yeah, okay, so that was kind of what I talked about earlier. You know, my first professor wasn't that great. The way the class was graded and the way the professor taught the class I wasn't really vibing with so then you know I tried it with a different professor it turned out well also that's a good follow-up comment in my experience a professor's teaching ability is inversely proportional to his need to tell people he went to MIT that is true that's right folks look it up it's called peacocking and it is not classy I took differential equations twice retaking a class is a rite of passage damn never thought about that might be onto something there. Yeah, there are some things that every engineer has to do, aren't there? Retaking a class, bragging about how you're gonna make six figures right out of college, bragging about how you only have to take four years of college, and telling people that you don't like English, and that you can't write for shit. And that's actually probably the reason you became an engineer. What was the average? If the whole class did terrible, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Yep, think about that curve. I think about that curve all the time. I miss her so much. That body was rocking. <laughs> Never been in a relationship once again. Not stressed that enough. If it felt hard for you, even if studying hard, everyone felt the same. And there must be some curves, because professor can't give most of them D. Yes, because that would be against the law. But no, uh, jokes aside, this is a good point. Do you have friends in the class? This is not... <laughs> an interrogation about your social life. I'm just saying if you have friends in the class, you should talk to them and see how they did. You need a finger on the pulse of the class. Because if you don't know how other people are feeling about the class, you can kind of get in this echo chamber and think, oh my god, I'm the only one failing. I'm the stupidest motherfucker in this room. <laughs> but no, there's probably a lot of other stupid people. Well, no, sorry, that's not. <laughs> there's a, a lot of other people in that room that think they're stupid too. They actually probably think they're the stupidest one themselves. Whereas the truth is you're all dumb. That's, no, see, I did it again. That's not what I meant to say. I literally got a zero on my thermodynamics final and still got to be in the class. Don't worry, you'll make it out. <laughs> yeah, see, isn't that insane? You can get a zero on a class final and still make it out. That's why engineers have such a skewed perception of reality because nothing we learned in college makes sense. <laughs> took differential equations three times and still don't really understand it. Yeah, and I know, and I'm speaking from personal experience here, there are classes you'll take that even after taking them, you'll be like, I don't understand any of that. But you passed, and that's all that matters. And the only other thing that matters is that you follow me on Instagram, like this video. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.